All right, we are here back with Dr. Jill and Rosenberg. I remember a few years ago we got together, remember, at the office? And we did. And we did like a series of interviews. Um, Joan has been integral in my work. Those of you who have been to Personal Story Power, you know her, you've seen her. She works with a lot of the people that, uh, that we work with. Um, because, you know, there's always this there's always this thing between story and health, and, and Joan is, you know, one of the best known psychologists in the world, and I talk about story, so you're going, man, how, does, how do these two worlds come together? Well, there's something about story that I rarely talk about in public, just because um, it's not really my expertise, but when you start to master your story, you start to get very healthy. Uh, in fact, it's optimum health. And yes, that, yes. And that's where Joan and I have really come together yeah. on on the ability to tell your story, which gives you this health. So, uh, Joan, uh, and Joan has a new book out, which we're going to be talking about today, which you're all going to pick up. 90 Seconds to a Life You Love. 90 Seconds to a Life You Love. Very cool, Joan. Um, let's talk about it. I'd love to. Okay, because often in my group, she talks about you know, the emotions that come up and, and how, how long it takes for those emotions. Right. Yeah. Right. So talk a little bit about that. Well, the, the, what I ended up happening for me is I really wrestled with this question. As it, one is it's tied to story, to our life story. Yeah. And the second is like in general, what made it difficult for people to experience and move through unpleasant feelings? Mm. And anytime you start telling your story, <laughs> yep. guess what? Yeah. Especially when you have people go to the ones that are a little bit more challenging yep. and that were, that were formative for us, yep. then we know that the unpleasant stuff's coming up. Yep. And what people want to do is they want to shut down on it. Yeah. They want to avoid it. They want to suppress it. They want to put it away. And the, the, what, the part of what I talk about in the book and really kind of the whole premise of the book is that if you can stay with those feelings, staying as aware and in touch, with those mm. feelings as possible, yeah. uh, then, and allow yourself to kind of move through them, then what opens up to you is a, is a life of choice and a life that feels so much more liberated. So wow. the, 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 yeah. And if you want, we can dive into kind of the formula that I talk about in the book. Let, let's do that, because look, you know, what I talk about is story, right? But what I don't talk about too much is health. Um, what people don't know about me is that this is how I got healthy, you know, by being able to uh, find my own voice and tell my own story. And uh, by the way, the byproduct of it was I got to be a healthy guy, you know? Right, right. so so the, the first part of it is yeah. when, when you tell your story, you actually take experience, which is often more right hemispheric for most of us, mm -hmm. and our words are in the left hemisphere. Mm -hmm. But when you start to bridge the two and you put words to experience, mm -hmm. the more you integrate the brain, the healthier you become. So, I mean, that's, that's the kind of thing that we've synced up on is yeah. that, yeah, this whole thing about story makes us more healthy. Yeah. And this whole narrative of your life, you know, like if you, if you have a narrative of your life and you're actually able to speak that and share that, that would be considered well, optimum health, absolutely, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. It's how you experience and how you express. Take us through the process that the book will take us through. Because I want, I want my people to not only tell their story, but to have this kind of health, to have this kind of freedom of movement because they have this ability to tell their story. So I want them to be able to buy your book and, and go through this process. So, okay. so tell them what that's going to go, how that's going to look, what's that's going to, what's that's going to be like. Okay. So the, it, it's in a formula. Think of an, a, a colleague of ours actually named it the Rosenberg Reset. So I'm going to borrow that phrase. <laughs> And, and uh, I, was, I was honored by what he did. So it's, it's the Rosenberg Reset, and it, the idea is that it's one choice, eight feelings, 90 seconds. And the one choice is that you want to be as aware of and in touch with as much of your uh, emotional experience or as much of your feeling as possible. So we're not talking about disconnecting or distracting by social media or pornography or food or... TV or whatever it might be, it's you stay aware and you stay present to your experiences as opposed to shutting it down. So awareness, that's the first choice. Then the eight feelings. And what I found, Bo, is that what ends up happening is that when we go through life, it's our everyday experience of life, 
that it's roughly one or more of eight unpleasant feelings surface. So the feelings are sadness, shame, helplessness, anger, vulnerability, embarrassment, disappointment, and frustration. And oftentimes it's like, I get two questions around this. It's like, why these eight, right? right? And it's because they're the most common feeling reactions or the most common feeling outcomes to things not turning out the way we need or the way that we want. So I'm not talking about trauma here. I'm not talking about tragedy. I'm talking, because that sort of encodes in the brain differently. I'm talking about our everyday experiences, that something happens, we don't like it, somebody flaked on us, whatever mm. it is. It's going to be one or more of those eight. And, so, and then the, the 90 seconds, which is really the method to it, mm -hmm. is, is to understand that most of us actually come to understand what we feel emotionally through our body first. Hmm. So again, think of, think of if I get embarrassed, then there's heat coming up and this redness in my face that everybody can see, but mm -hmm. I can feel the heat and the sensation of that. Yeah. Or there's heaviness at my chest for sadness. Or there's, when I get angry, my, you know, my jaw clenches or I clench my fist, whatever it might be, it's, and it's unique to each one of us. It's not exactly the same. So how it shows up in you is going to show up different than how it shows up in me or how it shows up differently for yourself. And so, the, but the, here's the key, because I was always telling people to ride the wave, ride the wave, yeah. ride the wave. And it, what, when the neuroscience discoveries came out, what they, again, that what they highlighted is, again, we feel what we feel in our body first. But so think of this, when, so, when a feeling gets triggered in your life, whatever it might be, then there's a rush of biochemicals that flood into the bloodstream. Mm -hmm. And that flood of, of biochemicals activates the bodily sensation. Mm -hmm. So embarrassment, again, with the redness or the heat, it's activating a bodily sensation. But the, 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 there's a flushing out of those same biochemicals in roughly an upper range of 90 seconds. Wow. That's all it is. It's 90 That's seconds. That's all it is. Yeah. Yeah. So that when people go, oh, well, I don't want to feel something. <laughs> right. They're going, oh, it's 90 it's seconds. It's 90 seconds. Anyone can do it. Anyone can exactly. survive it. Exactly. And what we're talking about, and then what dawned on me, is that what made feeling unpleasant feelings so hard is that people didn't like the bodily sensation of what was letting them know what they were feeling emotionally. Huh. So if you, can, if you can experience and move through one or more, so it's not just one, one or more 90 second bodily sensation waves, then you can stay present to the feeling and then you get the benefits that follow, which is insight and a whole bunch of other stuff. Wow. Like a, 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 a full, alive experience of life. Why? Because you're doing the full range of feeling. Yeah. It's so cool just to think that, you know, here we are, um, you know, you think your life is tough and you think going through these feelings is tough, but when you know there's an end point to it, there's a, there's a timer on it. Sort of, yeah. Sort of like yeah. a timer. So yeah. And that 90 second little cooking timer clicks, bing, right. and now it's over. And, and it, if you think of embarrassment, it doesn't last 90 seconds. Right. It's much shorter than that. Yeah. yeah. And again, the 90 second idea, just so it's correct attribution, Dr. Jill Bolte Taylor, an, a Harvard trained neuroscientist, was the one that made that first observation. But for me, it was putting that idea together that, okay, now I could help people really experience and move through those feelings because they knew, it, one, it was a bodily sensation yeah. that was the only thing they had to tolerate, and two, it was short-lived. Wow. All of you can do that. All of you can work through those 90 seconds when you're sharing your story or otherwise. And uh, I want you to pick the book up. 90 Seconds to a Life You Love. I want you to pick the book up because look, um, not only are you going to be successful by telling your story, but the health that comes along with it when you know you can ride that wave for only 90 seconds and get through it, it your family will thank Joan, right? Your customers will thank Joan because not only will you be impactful with your story, but you bring along health with it and the vibrancy that you have. Uh, Joan, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's, it's, it's always great to get together with you and, and, and bridge this gap between story and health. And so go out there and pick up Joan's new book. 
Thanks, everyone. Here's what I want you to do next. I want you to go over to BoEason.com and I want you to download my free storytelling guide. And in there are all kinds of exercises to get you up on your feet, start developing and telling your story. You're also going to be the first to find out when a new video comes out because the hardest thing about being the best and continuing to be the best is you have to be reminded of what is current. So you're going to be the first to know. We're going to keep you accountable. Go over to BoEason.com. Continue to be the best.